So good afternoon, friends. It's very clear that, you know, the post lunch session and the start of it has not been controlled by robots. Because if it was, we would not be struggling with a little bit of technology or the technology glitches here and there. And we would not be actually waiting for the hall to be full. Robots would have just passed the message in a technological telepathic manner and everybody would have arrived more or less at the same time. Anyway, the quest of robots to be human, that is the topic of today, of my talk. And I'm reminded of a movie which I saw way back in 1999, The Bicentennial Man. How many of you have seen that movie? You know, very less number of people. It did not do very well at the box office, but it was a cult classic. It is the story of an NDR series robot, which is taken in for housekeeping jobs and a kind of a maid servant jobs in a large family. A robot in a house doing the jobs which normally the mother or the father or you know the human uh, human serving humans do there are reactions which are positive negative and suddenly the family realizes that even this robot actually has emotions it cannot express it because the face is you know made of steel or you know, whatever exterior it was made of. But when accidentally he breaks the toy of the little miss of the house to kind of repent or kind of make her happy, he goes and makes or crafts the same toy in wood to gift it back to her, bringing in immense joy to the entire family. That is the time when everybody realizes that this robot has emotions. And the owner of the house then, you know, decides to test it out further. He goes back to the, you know, developer and asks whether he has similar robots in his, you know, uh, in his factory or in his uh, repertoire. And there is none which they can find. And he brings them back, brings the robot back, and slowly there is a relationship which starts to get formed between the various people and the robot. Then one day, accidentally, he cuts, you know, his hand, the robot, and the owner again takes him back to the factory with one clear instruction that his interior or the software will not be tampered with, only the thumb will be repaired. And he makes them sign a lot of agreements and everything. And he brings them back. And then that is how the bonding between the owner and the robot actually begins. The robot then starts to draw a salary from the owner of the house. And since he doesn't use it, he is not a human being, he starts to accumulate a huge, huge back balance, you know, which is the, with the salary which he is getting. And then suddenly, you know, he realizes that I have emotions. Some people are treating me as a servant. I want independence. And he is given the independence. In fact, the owner of the house is, you know, very angry with him and says, okay, you are banished from my life. And he lets him go. Then the robot actually builds himself a very nice house at, the, at a beach front, right? And then this, the story actually, the movie came in 1999. The story starts in 2005. And then, and then in 2048, in the movie, it is shown that he has again a very brief meeting with the owner of the house. And in that, you know, there is some interaction which takes place and the entire family realizes that probably the person who really loved, cared for the owner of the house was this robot much more than anybody else. Anyway, life goes on. This guy has earned a lot of money 
and then he joins hands with the son of the creator you know of the ndr series and then they kind of start to you know interact and the first thing which he does is he says let my facial muscles reflect the emotions which are going on in my you know mind or heart then you know slowly he progresses and then he starts to develop organs for medical industry enhancement which can go inside a robot as well as a human being they make lot of money you know the company becomes very rich they get it gets funded which was not getting funded otherwise and then you know he meets the younger little miss, little miss you know who is now much more grown and actually there was a bonding which had developed between the two of them but she is married to somebody else and he feels the pangs of jealousy at that point in time and anyway she is divorced she you know uh she dies at a certain time and then he is busy in his own work then after almost about 100 years he meets the great grandchild of the little miss who is identical to this little miss and falls in love with that girl and slowly the girl also responds and that is where the bonding starts the bonding starts and they want to marry now a robot and a human being getting getting married was unheard of right so they go to the world congress the world congress says you know you cannot do this you cannot do this you cannot do this you cannot be a human being okay then slowly slowly he develops you know the various parts because artificial intelligence and technology has progressed and then the world congress actually says that okay you have achieved this but how can an immortal be called a human being because human beings cannot be immortal and then you know he develops a system where the blood enters his body you know starts to flow through his body and then the aging process starts and then the two that girl and you know they stay together and the you know they kind of get aged together number of times they go to the world congress something or the other on the death bed this is the last scene of the film when the announcement is coming that now that you are aging right he dies and he is on artificial support and he doesn't see you know live to see that announcement that a robot has been you know qualified as a human being and that girl also you know asks her life support to be taken out and the two die together this is the journey of the bicentennial man it was in 1999 based on a novel called the positronic man and the positronic man itself was based on the previous novel of uh, isomov which was the bicentennial man this was 1999 the movie the moment i saw i fell in love with the concept of robots humans serving humans for menial jobs why humans are supposed to do much better things in january of 2017 when i actually was reading a newspaper the european Commu- commission actually has recommended that robots should have similar rights as humans 1999 the movie had come now just imagine the robotic technology is progressing somebody is doing a job for you a robot is doing a job for you it has a certain responsibility if humans fail they get penalized they get appreciation they get a salary they don't get a salary robot is doing the same if it starts to do it independently it should be rewarded or it should be punished it should be responsible for its actions right and slowly you know this journey has started there was a time when there were lot of taboos in, in our society slowly they have also become accepted so the journey is already starting with the european commission what are the regular question marks you know which come in our minds the regular question marks are you know robots live up to expectations and people can surpass expectations okay but when this young girl was demonstrating siri in front of us even if it was you know a regular script many of us were surprised 
today you know when i i have put on the google all the you know systems in my android early morning i wake up it gives me the weather then it says time to go to the office then it has you know kind of marked my calendar and it says time to go home you know this is the weather this is the map everything so they are monitoring you somewhere it is it not surprising right it is surprising technology is moving at a very very rapid pace machines can personalize but people can make it personal but if you see and look if you come to our office we will show you humanoids the way they dance sing you know at the first level they really impress you they exceed your expectation especially expectations of those who have who are not alive to the idea and the possibilities which artificial intelligence augmented reality iot or robotics brings to the table i was just explaining to you know some of the people who were in the room earlier that if you look at artificial intelligence if you look at you know augmented reality if you look at iot these are software driven things they are like the atma in a sharir or in a in a body they require a body they require a body to live in right like the atma requires our sharir right is it all right to put it in a sedentary you know kind of a product which is drawing its own power not moving anywhere and it's performing or is it going to realize its true potential in a device which has a mind of its own which has a body of its own which has a power of its own which can move around on its own like a human being does so the real life or the real potential of ai ar or iot would be in the robotic devices the way mobiles have proliferated around us and today everybody has the mobiles as an extension of their palm robots in multiple numbers would be in every home within the next decade or so even in india if you look at you know artificial intelligence and cognitive abilities and that is where you know i think the big challenge for robotics is right because anything which has a strong ai must have intentional thinking intentional thinking will come only when you have a brain of your own a brain of your own will have a set of beliefs of its own can you imagine a robot at this point in time which has that look at the honda asimo which you know which is uh, which is moving around you know and shown in many many films does it have a brain of its own like that can it you know move around anywhere even in a normal street like that cannot a driverless car is also a robot actually right and i was giving the example of two red lights at a distance from each other one is turning red and one is you know turning green that there is a distance between the two red lights and here it is recognizing it has been programmed to recognize the red light and with lot of accuracy that when it is a red light i must stop when it is amber i must you know get into the standby mode and when it is green i must just run how does it distinguish sometimes and that means there is a lot of change which is required to be done if you look at human beings ourselves you know billions of years have gone into bringing us to the level of you know development we are in at this stage we are the best creations of god but yet what happens when we leave our house or about to leave our house with whatever best cars which we may have everybody comes and says zara dhyan se jana because tum to theek chalaoge but some idiot on the road will not be driving properly right with all the senses which we have every faculty which is there at our disposal right we still say dhyan se jana just imagine a robot has exactly the same thing to do when it leaves a place there'll be you know when our lawn robot moves around a lawn कहीं पर डिच है कहीं पे माउंटेन सी यू नो हिल टाइप है कहीं पे बारिश आ जाएगी 
कहीं पे डॉग विल बी सिटिंग ऑन टॉप ऑफ इट समबडी विल टच यू नो रेन विल कम ऑल दो थिंग्स यू नो इट हैज टू हैव दो सेंसेस एंड रोबोट आर डेवलपिंग यू नो दो सेंसेस वेरी वेरी केयरफुली बट कॉग्नेटिव एबिलिटीज इज समथिंग विच इज द रियल टेस्ट ऑन एवरी फ्रंट दैट यू नो यू हैव टू सी सो लेट्स जस्ट टेक वन एग्जाम्पल विच इज ऑफ ए you know a person who is on telephone right so what does a person do on the on hearing a ringtone you know he has to take a decision that is you know to pick up which is the motor action and robots also when you define the degrees of freedom it is based on the servos which they have right degrees of freedom that without human intervention it can function up to a particular point it requires you know language skills it requires social skills and interacting properly with a human being right so human being is able to do it very carefully and i i mean very very properly when you are doing something i will say suddenly ma'am please don't look at your mobile right okay no i'm no i'm just giving an example i'm <laughs> so so what happened was that i just suddenly said she was doing she did lot of actions simultaneously along with hiding her mobile phone and then there was some interaction which happened between us which was social in nature smile came the you know teeth were visible mine and yours and everybody's there was a lot which happened can a robot do it at this point in time these are the things which are challenging you know the scientists across the the globe and but let us understand the you know cognitive ability and you know the challenges which are there so first is perception so basic five senses which you talk of right so i think this is no longer a challenge for artificial intelligence or robotics at this point you know we have more or less you know covered this it's very very simple if we look at attention you know this also more or less today's technology has been able to overcome right which is object but you know concentration on a particular object action or thought and ability to manage competing demands in an in any environment memory also you know it is something which has been you know overcome and with with the with the every passing day i think it is being overcome motor skills and this is an exercise you know all of us must do okay everybody whatever you are doing tap with your right hand and try to draw a circle with your left everybody try to do tap with your right hand and try to draw a circle how many of you are able to do it successfully many people are lying anyway so now the thing is try to do the same thing left hand you start to tap and right hand side you start to draw how many people are able to do it lot more because many more people are right handers and that is how you know the major activity is being done by your right hand okay so now this thing god's best invention god's best creation how many people were able to do just think right and robotics also has the same challenge right so here the work is still in progress and that is why when you see the robots they say so many servos so many degrees of freedom and things like that language you know we you demonstrated you know here right now but still there is much more to language than just basic understanding there are accents to it there are hidden meanings to it there is tonality to it right there is a history to it there is a future to it more than what is being said but basic language you know there is a progress which has happened visual and spatial progressing again you know i gave you one example uh, of that driverless car looking at the red light the distance between the two of them the size between the two of them you know all that i gave but here comes in the real challenge which human beings actually exercise day in and day out at every point in time of their life so 
flexibility, the capacity for quickly switching to appropriate mental mode. You just demonstrated. Right? Theory of mind, insight into other people's inner world, their plans, their likes and dislikes. Right? Now, look at the story of the bicentennial man. How did the robot and that girl fall in love with each other? It is only possible because of this thing, right? And there is also a lot of development which is taking place on this front because today robots have also learned to fake emotions. Problem solving, decision making, working memory, you know, again, a lot of progress has happened. So on a 10 point scale, you can give the robots 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10. So there is a, there's a massive progress which is happening. Emotional self-regulation. This is still a major challenge for robotics, where the ability to identify and manage one's own emotions for good performance. When Davos devotes a whole session on the fourth industrial revolution, right? And you know, you're feeling a little bit sleepy. I can see, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. A robot will never fall asleep, asleep in front of me. And that is how, you know, robots are now being rented across the globe. Across the factories, you will have robotic armies. They will not be asking for leaves. Right? They will be churning out day in and day out, whatever number of hours. Machine capacity exists. You can scale up, scale down. When they are working, there is a cost engaged in it. When they are not working, it is a capex which is there. So, you know, this is where it's a, it's a development which is for the good. But there has to be a life after work, you know, work-life balance. So, if you want to recognize a robot as equivalent to a human being, how would that robot have a work-life balance? Because for all you know, people coming from the Mars may be robots, you know, and we might actually be, the, there is a latest movie which has been released, I think just two days or three days ago, which is, you know, the first Martian boy who is, you know, who takes birth on Mars and arrives to, to the Earth and, you know, how, how he is accompanied by a robotic, uh, what do you say, assistant and how their challenges are. But you can also probably be reminded of PK. How many of you have seen PK? How does he learn? Bhojpuri? Huh? Holding hands. Holding hands. Just imagine. Sara ka sara, he just transfers. It, it is not just, you know, in the figment of imagination. These are things which are going to be reality. Sequencing, inhibition, you know, all these are at various, various stages. Startling, you know, realities are that mind transform from one robot to another. I'm dying. What do I do? Atma gai, shreer gaya, rote to dhote, dhlong ko chhod gaya is dunya mein. Thik hai? And agar robot mara, usne kush nahi karna, usne apna mind dusre ko de de na. Body gai, koi baat nahi. Right? It's a startling reality. Just imagine, the entire history is there. Dynamic morphologies, hum, we can go up to itne feet ki height hai, itni cheez hai, thik hai, ek do aberrations idhar udhar hoti hongi. Today also the fattest woman in the world has arrived in Mumbai for, you know, an operation. But, huh? From Egypt, okay. See, you're so well informed. A rope. <laughs> so, you know, they can be built of any size, in any modularity, right? Technologically enabled telepathy. You know, just transferring information, immunity to damaging and burdensome biological functions. Kisi ko khana khane nahi jana robot ko, right? Or kuch cheeze nahi karne, usko keval kaam karna hai, right? Productivity would be quite high. And reproduction, instant reproduction, mass production, self-replication. These are startling realities which exist in today's world with robots, right? Did you even imagine the possibility which is coming into this world? 
we are talking of demographic dividend and if germany has to take back its competitive edge over china or india or whomsoever all it takes is you know dominating and taking and converting the robotic technologies which exist today into reality and the last challenge which is the biggest challenge for the robotics to work a robotic technology ai etc can probably decipher almost everything with a pattern even a small twitch of you know a muscle with the background which it has it will be able to understand the emotions but please remember go back to that example where you smiled right the visceral nature of emotion comes because of the empathy when we are talking the eyes get moist sometimes why is it that the eyes get moist it is only humans right and because there is you are putting yourself in other person's place understanding his or her emotions which that person may be going through and that is why you are able to you know really relate engage in social interaction and understanding this is the biggest challenge for ai and robotics and if we are able to overcome the day is not far where the robots would be equated equivalent to human beings thank you